So here we are at the third video, the ride. I can't emphasize how important it is to test ride each saddle that you get. Beautiful morning for a test ride. <laughs> Next saddle is this one, and I like the looks of this one. Whether it looks any good on the bike, sometimes they look good off the bike. When you put them on, they don't look any good. But anyway, I hope this one's really comfortable. I like it. And the all the uh, logos and imprinting on there, it looks really professionally done. It's nice and even, and the wording is really well done. And it's like it's etched, not etched, it's more than etched. It's formed into there. You can't probably see it. But it looks like it's going to be really, really hard wearing and look good for a long time. So anyway, and it was $12.96, I think. So it's one of the really cheap ones. So let's go and see how we go with this one. Do you have a group know where to go, We're George? We're all meeting yeah, at I've, Junga. I've done it. All right, we're all, all meeting at Junga. I want to go and bring the fast group and the slow group. <laughs> <laughs> a medium group. Oh, I know how to get to a Junga from here. So we got a few riders out this morning. And trying a new seat. Here we go. 99 bike. What a recommendation. Bob's in the slow group. What's Bob? Bob, Bob. Get over here. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to go crazy, eh? We got two groups. Um, got the way. slower group leave 10 or 15 minutes before us. I might go for them and wait up the top of the, one of the hills. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you go slow on. Go on, Steve. You're slow. I'll on the way back. you know which way you're going, Mike? Oi, where's Trevor going with the slow group? 8.59. Jeff, you're not supposed to go with the slow group. Well, I didn't want to go there. Yeah, some of these guys, some of these guys go with the slow group and they should be with us. Yes. That makes sense. George thinks he's coming back to slow us down, but we've... Sit, foot, slow, guys. Top of the hill. See, still good. Some guy riding back. Wondered who that was. Now, um, now the first part of the ride was really good. The seat, I felt like I was sitting, floating on top of the seat. Plenty of room, and actually, I felt behind me as I was riding at one stage, and I thought I, I felt like I was sitting too far back. So I felt behind. There was plenty of room at the back, so I sat back a bit further, and that was fine. So, and I didn't feel like I was, the nose was too hard or anything. So it felt like I was sitting on top of the saddle, which is a good thing because that way you can slide yourself back a bit or forward a bit how you want to do. If you're in the drops or you want to do a bit of a time trial, you sit forward, etc. I don't have to explain that to you. So that was really good. The first part of the ride was really nice and I was getting excited. I'm going to keep this saddle because it looks good as well. The second half of the ride, unfortunately, I started to feel the saddle. And it was both the nose and the back bones. So the whole the saddle as a whole. So that means really that the saddle, I don't know, maybe I'm getting soft in my old age. So the saddle just felt hard all over. And by the end of the ride, I was almost glad to get off the seat. Um, so unfortunately, not as comfy as the other seats. Anyhow, that's that. That's all I can say for that one. So we'll continue on, go to the next seat now. Now the final stage in getting your ideal saddle is the test ride. It's so important, all the information aside, the test ride is the litmus test. Without a test ride, you won't find your ideal saddle. So when you get a saddle, either it's online, some bike shops will loan you saddles, some manufacturers have loan systems where you put a deposit down and they'll give you one or two or three saddles even to loan out. That's really good. Online, I'm not sure if they do it so much, but if your local bike shop supports that, then do it that way. It's better to lose $10 in a deposit than to go out and buy a $100 seat or whatever and lose that sort of money when the seat's uncomfortable. So the loan system is a good idea. So take advantage of that if that's in your area. Next thing is when someone comes up to you and says, oh, I got this seat and it's really, really good for me. I can ride hundreds of kilometers and I recommend it to Freddie and Freddie likes it as well. And I think you should have one of these seats. Well, be wary, very wary, because they might be well-meaning and sincere, but it doesn't necessarily mean, in fact, it's a very slim chance that that seat they're recommending is going to fit you. If it does sit, fit the criteria, for instance, the width and the shape and all that sort of thing that we've already gone through, then maybe it's worth testing it. But if it doesn't fit any of that criteria, then 
really the saddle is probably most likely not going to fit you. So other people might be well-meaning for you and uh, recommending saddles, it's all very well, but there's a slim chance that the seat is going to fit you. Next thing is what sort of conditions do you ride your bike in? Now, wet conditions is important. If you ride in the wet quite often, then test ride your saddle in wet conditions. Don't go in the dry. One, number one is your chamois reacts differently. It squashes down, it thins out, and you're going to feel your seat more in the wet conditions. So if you ride in the wet a lot, test that seat a lot in the wet first to make sure it's right. Uh, next thing is take this little thing with you, the Allen key, to adjust your seat. So you can do tweaks on the way. Also down here as well if you need to adjust your height a little bit. So mainly it'll be your fore and aft and your, and your tilt, the tilt mainly. So take your little Allen key with you in your back pocket if you don't already take a little Allen key kit with you or something like that or someone else has one. So what you do is you go for a ride and then you stop, you tweak, make a little tweak and then you ride again, tweak a little bit ride again, tweak a little bit and keep going. Now, if you're going with a bunch, your mates might sort of think, oh, we're stopping all the time. Well, try not to stop them for that. There'll be appropriate times when you can stop and tweak. But you may, have, you may have to go out by yourself and do that sort of thing as well, if you're gonna stop quite often. Uh, top of a hill, waiting for a few others. Good time to adjust your seat while you've got a, a minute or two. Now, when you do the tweaking, don't go moving a saddle great you know, degrees or anything. You only really need to move it one or two degrees up and down. I would, I'd recommend just one degree movement, very slight movements, either down or up for your tilt, and your fore and aft pretty much the same. Go by millimetres, maybe two millimetre increments on your fore and aft as well, and your height pretty much the same. Go in two millimetre increments. So it shouldn't need great adjustments, just a little bit. So. Take your Allen key with you. Don't miss out on a great saddle just because you didn't tweak. So ride, tweak, ride, tweak, ride, tweak, and you'll find, if that saddle's right for you, you'll find the sweet spot. Next is to take that test saddle out for the distances that you normally do. Now, most saddles are going to feel pretty good at 20 kilometres. At 30 kilometres, they're going to be mm, okay. At 40 kilometres, you might start feeling the saddle, especially if they're not suitable for you. Now, if you're normally doing 80 kilometre rides, then you must take your test saddle out for 80 kilometre or 90 kilometre rides to make sure it's any good. If you're doing 100, 120 kilometre rides, then do that distance on your test saddle. Now, as the distance increases that you do, then the more critical the selection for your saddle. So do the distance that you normally do on your saddle for your test saddle as well. And multiple times, you know, two or three times to make sure if you've pretty much got the saddle, if you're happy with it. Next is to move around a fair bit on your saddle. Don't just stay in one position. Move around and test it out all over. So try it on your drops, on your hoods, and on the top here, different pelvic tilts. Make sure it's all comfortable in the positions you normally ride. Hill climbing, if you do a lot of hill climbing, then do that, because quite often you fall in hill climbing, you sit back in your saddle, and you get in that nice one position, and you stay in that position for quite some time, putting a fair bit of pressure on your saddle maybe. So try it out in all those different circumstances that you normally do as well, different positions, not just staying in one position on the saddle. Make sure it's good all over for you. First half of the ride, this seat's quite nice. How do you like it? Quite nice. <laughs> so that's the first half of the ride, but sometimes the second half tells what tells. Anyway, so coffee shop and then do the second half. Back from the first ride and not bad, not bad. I actually reckon that seat's quite nice. I did have some discomfort in the second half of the ride on the nose just a bit and surprisingly on one side. Just on the, just what would you say, just before in front of the ichial tuberosity. Sort of like a leg rub but not a leg rub. Hard to describe. Anyway, on the left side. So I'm just going to tilt the seat maybe one millimetre forward, just a little bit, and just see how we go for another ride. Get the bike out. It's dirty. We got wet this morning. We only had 11 riders out this morning. It was horrible. Oh, it wasn't that horrible. It was warm. It wasn't freezing cold, but it was wet. Wet moisture. It was almost tropical. Anyhow, we got wet. It was about 66, 67 K with one hump in it, so it was mostly flat and getting the wet backside. The chamois was a little bit squidgy getting on the soaky side because of all flicking up 
all the wet, the road was wet pretty much all the time. And of course, with the, with the glasses on, we could ride behind the guys and <laughs> just as well it wasn't mountain bike, it was worse, but nevertheless, you don't want to open your mouth too wide and you end up inhaling or swallowing dirty water from the road. But anyhow, that's a problem. So, now the seat, guess what? Tilted down the nose one millimeter, didn't I? I think it made all the difference in the world. It was excellent. I had no gripes whatsoever. Didn't think of the seat at all. Probably why I forgot to do it on the on the ride video of it as well as I'm off the seat. Excellent. I'm so, so happy I found this seat. So I've got to get my own saddle because that's the other rider's saddle. He's lent it to me. He lent me what? Five saddles or something? And that's one of them. So I've got to give that back to him. It's not my saddle to keep. Uh, but that's all right. I've got to try and get one in black. Hopefully they're still available. So no, no painful spots, no pinching areas, no folding of the chamois anywhere, no grabbing. Really, really nice. Very happy with it. Reminded me of my old days. Uh, I used to race and train on turbo, just the plain turbo seats. Celitalia San Marco. Celitalia, I think. Not the flight, not the turbo matic range, just the plain turbo. Very comfy seat. And then you couldn't buy them anymore. Why did they do that? Good product comes along and they take it off the market and replace it with something that's supposed to be better in some ways, and it's not really. So anyway, so remind me of the old turbo seat. Um, now, the other thing is too, when you get a seat post with the increments, I mentioned that I put one millimetre down on the nose and it made all the difference in the world. With your seat post, you get some that have increments and, and as you undo the bolt and click, 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 as you push it or pull it up, click, click, click. You don't want one of those seat posts because each click is usually three or four degrees or maybe even five degrees tilt. And that's, that's terrible. You can't get the right position. Get one where there's no clicks and you can just move it very, very slightly and then lock it up and then try it out. So get, don't get one of those seat posts to seat clamps that have the increments, they're no good. Right, so what to look for when you test ride each saddle. Actually, it's more a matter of what to feel for, isn't it? So with your perfect bike saddle, it'll be comfortable all over, no more painful spots and no more chafing at any distance you ride. Then you found your perfect saddle. Now, the way to do that is a process of elimination. You use the three parameters, the height, the fore and the aft, and the tilt. That's why you take your Allen key with you when you go for rides, so you can adjust them for the saddle that you're riding. Now, each saddle that you try is slightly different, so you're going to have to make those adjustments all over again, individually for each saddle. The other thing is each parameter affects each other. So your height is going to affect the fore and aft and the tilt, the fore and aft is going to affect the tilt and the height, etc. They're all going to be slightly interfering with each other. Now, the least affected is the height. Most saddles are approximately the same height. So what you can do is keep your saddle at the same height. Don't worry about that at the moment. Just work on the fore and aft and the tilt as you ride. So that narrows it down for you. Now, when you go for your ride, if you find an uncomfortable spot, make the adjustment while keeping the saddle clamp approximately in the middle of the rails. So you just need to make tilt adjustments and keep that clamp in the middle of the rails. You can go slightly forward or slightly back, but not too far forward or too far back, as we discussed previously. So try and keep that in the middle of the rails and make the tilts from there. So you're on your test ride, and let's just say you start feeling the nose area after about 20 kilometres. So stop, get your Allen key, undo your seat pillar, not too much, because you don't want your seat to be moving too much. Just enough so you can tap the seat and move it. So the nose needs to go down if you can feel the nose. So just tap it ever so much, a little bit down, one degree is plenty. Tighten it up again, put your Allen key in your back pocket and off your ride. If that's fine and you don't feel the nose again, then you're right. If you start to feel the nose again, do the same thing, stop, Allen key, push it down just a fraction, tighten it up and off you go again. By the second attempt, usually that would have eliminated any pain on the nose. So the same thing for the back, if you start feeling uncomfortable and your set bones, stop, use your Allen key, undo the seat post, just tilt one degree back, just that ever so much, tighten it up and off your ride again. If it happens again, you start to feel the seat bones, but the nose is okay, again, undo it, tilt it, fraction back, and then off you go. So you get the idea. It's whichever you feel pain in, tilt that away from that area, ever so fractional. 
if you can't get a happy medium between the nose uncomfortable and the back uncomfortable, usually under 50 kilometers, then chances are the padding's wrong, the flattened around section of your seat's wrong, or the profile from back to front is wrong. So it's time to move on to the next saddle. If you feel uncomfortable in the midsection of the seat, then it may be that the profile from back to front, your seat is too flat. You need to go for more of a shapely seat, S shape or the wave shaped seat, and that will distribute the pressure more from the back to the front away from your mid area. If you start feeling the middle of the seat right in the middle, as in right at where the very peak of the seat is as it comes up, then you might want to try one with a channel or a cutout like this seat. And if you've got that and it still doesn't help, try the profile from more round to a flatter profile. Try and go for a flatter seat. That way you get more surface contact that way away from your midsection. Now, if you've got chafing, it's another issue. Chafing on your inner thighs, you find it grabs on this part of the seat here, that's your transition zone. Then you need to go for a sharper transition rather than a gentle transition. Now, if you do want to adjust your fore and after of your seat for some reason, for instance, if you want to come forward, you push your seat forward, then that's going to make you more upright. Your pelvis will tilt back and you put more pressure on your sit bone area. So you need to adjust this. So the tilt, you tilt it back so there's less pressure on your sit bones and a bit more all over the frontal area. And vice versa, if you push your seat back, then you're going to be tilted that way. More pressure on the nose, so tilt the nose down a little bit. So of course, there you go, the fore and aft affects your tilt. So you need to accommodate each one as they go, if you're going to do that fore and aft adjustment. Now with your perennial relief channels or cutouts, some are bigger than others. Remember that that cutout is no support whatsoever. So if you're normally used to having some support there, it's gone. It's going to distribute the rest of your weight or pressure onto that rest of the contact area that's left. So a bigger relief channel or cutout may not be as comfortable as a smaller one or no cutout or channel. So just bear that in mind. A bigger one is not necessarily more comfortable. Now remember, one seat's not going to do all your styles of riding. So if you're doing so triathlon and you've got a mountain bike and a road bike as well, don't expect the same style of seat to fit all those needs because you're going to need different styles of seat. So for mountain biking, you might want a more wider and a general seat and a bit more padding. For time trialing and all that sort of thing, you might some want something with a perennial relief channel in the front. And for your general road riding, you might want something like that, flatter where you can move around a bit and get different positions. So different seats for different occasions. Now one misconception I still hear these days, rarely, but still hear it sometimes, is keep riding that uncomfortable seat because you'll break it in and it'll be all right. Well, that's a very old full leather seat or like the full leather books they have these days. Yep, you can ride them till, they, till you break it in and they fit beautifully. Other than that, all other seats, the plastic or carbon shells, you don't break them in. If it's uncomfortable and you can't get it right, it needs to be replaced. Move on to another saddle. So this saddle, $19.75, very well made, very solid construction, very happy with that. It's 286 grams in weight and the width 150 millimetres. And it looks so much like the specialised power expert seat, I would say it's supposed to be a copy. we just finished the ride. How do you like our ocean? Anyway, this seat is consistently uncomfortable. <laughs> it didn't get any worse, it just was uncomfortable from the very beginning to the very end. So I think it's too wide at the back or something. But uncomfortable all over. It felt like I was riding on no padding. So that one's no good, despite the fact that it was interesting, had the biggest of the uh, relief channel in here but anyhow well that's a bit odd I was expecting it actually to be quite comfortable considering that this seat here which I've already tried was very comfortable and it's very very similar in size this is a one this one's 152 and that's a 150 so you wouldn't think two millimeters would make that much difference when you look at them sideways they're almost identical when the length weighs from padding to padding, they're identical. This one's slightly longer overall, but from padding to padding, 
because the tail end here is just plastic, is identical. And looking down on top, there are some slight differences. The nose is slightly wider here. Um, that's probably about it. As for padding, it almost feels the same in the padding itself. They're both about the same softness or hardness, whichever you want to call it, consistency. So, very surprising, very surprising. This goes to show you that you really need to ride the seat. Even looking at it and measuring it from millimetre to a millimetre, <laughs> it can be so different to ride. Whoosh, off with the nice seat and on with the cheap $7 seat. $7. Now, this Vader, I bought uh, this seat here. I bought two of them three years ago and they haven't changed in style. There's a few Vaders, but this one in particular is the same. You can still buy them. Three years ago, I bought two of them. This one I put on the shelf, and the other one I put on my mountain bike straight away. And I rode it for about a year and a half. Extremely comfortable, really, really nice for a $7 seat. Um, and it was uh, abrasion resistant and everything, and in the wet it performed good. It didn't go funny in any shape. It lost a bit of the, um, now where was it? Uh, a bit of the logo, I think on the nose or up the back. But anyhow. But it was excellent for a year and a half. But that was on the mountain bike. How's it going to go on the road bike? So anyway, here's a brand new one. The other one out of the packet, put on the bike, and we'll see how it goes on the road bike. It's called Vader, Dark Vader. Now. Just got in with the fast guys. Uh, five of us. There's more coming. Anyhow, the seat is amazing. I can't say anything about it apart from excellent. So far, so good. So that's half the ride, so 40 k's and uh, another 42 odd. And we'll certainly tell. Usually, the second half of the ride tells the difference. Anyway, they're stuffing up, stuffing their face with cakes and coffee. Yeah, lunch, yeah. lunch of champions. Lunch of champions. <laughs> lunch of Three champions. or four shots. I forget how she makes it. Oh, now. really? At least three, I don't know. At least three shots. My goodness, guy would be jumping out of his skin. It, it is black. I see it's black. That looks, she does leave the crema. Well, how come you got yours straight away and we have to wait for ours? There's a big cut too. That's, that's oh, that's hard attack material. Oh. Now, in the second half of that ride, round about the 80k, 82k mark, I started to feel the saddle. It wasn't overly uncomfortable or anything, but I could definitely feel, oh, it's getting that way. So I imagine around about 90k's it would start to get uncomfortable. So equivalent in comfort to the Turnex, the Pro Turnex. Of course, this is a lot cheaper than the Pro Turnex. Now, um, I did another ride, a solo ride on it, and it was about 55, 60 Ks, and didn't feel a thing, it was fine. So obviously, around about the 80 K mark is the telling point for that. So same comfort as the Turnex, um, $11. It's a tenth of the price of the Pro Turnex, so you could buy 10 of these for the price of the, the other one. Uh, which I'd probably prefer to do because if you scratch the side of it or something or you fall off as you usually do at cafes you lean it on a building or something or even if you have a fall you can just put another saddle on a brand new saddle of course the disadvantage is it's probably 100 120 grams heavier than the Pro Turinex as well anyhow but brilliant brilliant comfort for the price $11 can't go wrong So the Specialized Romin, obviously an imitation one, uh, well made, very well made considering it's so cheap, $14.39, it's got all staples underneath, um, and, but the sur surface is slippery when you put your hand lightly and when you press down it's grabby, so that, that's a good thing as well. It's got the channel down the middle with the hole relief in the middle as well, pretty much in the right spot. Now with the width, it advertises at 143. Now I know the other specialized seat which came with this Yolio bike is 143, but when you actually measure it, it's 139. <laughs> so it's more like a, at the most 140, so probably more like a 138. So it's definitely too narrow for me and I could feel it on the rides. It's consistently uncomfortable all over. Um, probably okay up to 50 Ks, but after that it's not, it's too narrow for me. So that's it for that seat. I'm going to put the original Specialized that came with this bike back on because this is definitely a lot more comfortable. Well that's it for this series of videos. You should now be able to go out and find your ideal saddle or saddles if you need more than one. 
So in video number one, we looked at your position on the bike, once you've got that right, then how to measure your position, and then record it. So that was list number one. Very important to write those measurements down and keep them somewhere safe. In video number two, we looked at just the saddle itself, the various facets, and then had a list for that as well, all your personal requirements that you need in a saddle, so that when you go hunting for a saddle, you have that with you. In this video, in video number three, we looked at how to test ride that saddle or saddles, and there's a list for that. Yes, you can have a list for that as well. Not as essential as list number one and two, but nevertheless, it'll certainly be helpful. So in list number three, you would have the name of the saddle, the conditions you ride in, especially if it's wet, uh, the terrain, the sort of terrain that you consistently ride, and the distances that you usually do. Then there's the position on the bike, especially if you're riding low on a time trial or more upright. And then, of course, if you're riding a normal road bike, don't forget you've got slight increment differences on your tops, on your hoods, and on, your, on the, on the uh, drops down here. That'll change the pelvic tilt as well. So try all those positions out, and then you get it right. And, of course, most importantly, how does the saddle feel? So you can actually draw in or write in how you feel on the saddle, and using the tilt of the saddle to get rid of any uncomfortable spots. Hopefully, then, you can find the ideal position in the tilt and find your ideal saddle. So I'll put blank versions of those three lists on Facebook and on Instagram on OzCycle so you can download them or take snapshots of them and have them on your device when you're looking for your saddles or you can actually print some off and have your own physical version and fill them in. Now in my personal hunt for saddles I went through quite a few saddles and I didn't have enough room in all the videos to show you all the ones I went through but nevertheless um, a lot of the saddles weren't comfortable, a lot of riders lent me saddles, but they were too narrow, wrong shape or anything, something like that. But it was nice of those riders to lend me saddles, thank you very much. Now, of the ones that I bought, most of them were quite comfortable, and I had to narrow it down, didn't I, to really one saddle to replace that physique saddle. Well, oh, I've got one on there, but that's not the one I chose. I had to narrow it down. I came across two that I couldn't decide between. There was a Shimano Pro Tourniquet, that was really, really nice. And this one, just so happened to be saddle number one. Now I had to give the Pro Tourniquet back to the other rider because it wasn't mine. So I either go out and buy one, brand new one, which is about $130, $140, or I've already got this one. So I'm using this one. GoPro brackets already on. I just now to now put it on the canyon and I'm right. <laughs> So hopefully you found this series of videos helpful in narrowing down your hunt for your ideal saddle or saddles and saving you lots of time and money. See you soon. Cheers. Get back on the bike. It's a bit hard when you're sitting there for so long and you have a biscuit or a cup of coffee, tea, whatever you have, your banana, and then you have to get, <laughs> and, then you, and then you have to get back on your bike again and you don't feel like getting back on your bike, so it's no good. Don't have long coffee breaks. <laughs> Have a short one and then it's alright getting on your bike, it's so painful. Oh yeah, yeah.